Hi guys, welcome to the Ben and Polly channel. This is another new series video today looking at series four and ranking the stories. I am including the specials. So yeah, I'm gonna try and whiz through it as quickly as possible. So at number 15, we have The End of Time, which I gather most people love. So they'll probably be a bit shocked that this is at the bottom, but honestly, the only thing I enjoy about it is Wilf and sometimes the regeneration scenes at the end and that whole part of the storyline with the, with the knocking apart from that not a big fan of the John Sim master liked him in World Enough in Time when he came back but in this episode no and in series 3 no just not a big fan and this has got all these weird superpowers and I just couldn't keep engaged in the storyline. I rewatched this quite recently and yeah, it just doesn't do it for me, I'm afraid. Although I appreciate that there must be something that people like in it, but Tennant's not one of my favourite Doctors. But saying that, I do love some Series 4 episodes, as we will see, but yeah. Next we have number 14, which is Planet of the Dead which is a fun little run around, but for me, it's not very memorable at all. It's just, it's the one with the flying bus. And then you remember, oh yeah, Michelle Ryan's in it. Oh yeah, that comedian's in it, who I've forgotten his name, Lee Evans. Um, you know, I appreciate it. It, is, it is the kind of fun one out of the specials. It is a good time if you want to switch your brain off, but it's just quite boring to me. Um, Michelle Ryan is a good actress in this, and her partnership with David Tennant's decent enough. Apparently she's got some good big finish material as well, so if you enjoy her character, check those out. But yeah, for me it's just not a very memorable one, and the side characters in this, apart from uh, Lady Christina, I couldn't tell you any of their names or anything like that. Um, so yeah, moving on. Next we have at number 13, The Next Doctor, which I'd say is marginally better than Planet of the Dead, just for the fact that it's got David Morrissey in it and his connection with David Tennant from Blackpool. And yeah, so they've got a good chemistry together and yeah, the character stuff in that and the whole thing of him thinking that he's the Doctor and oh, next Doctor, like it is quite interesting, that part of it, but then the whole Cyberman plot is I'm just not feeling it and the whole, you know, woman at the end and oh god, it's just not to the standard <laughs> that, I, that I hold my Doctor Who and my historical episodes, which, you know, it is one. Um, yeah, it's just quite boring. It plods along. It has its some good comedy moments with David Morrissey and David Tennant and uh, Rosita, the the assistant, but just not good enough. And I like Kylie in this, and I like some of the other guest crew, uh, Banna Capalata. Um, this is fun, but this is actually, you know, I could tell you the plot of this one and I could tell you some good quotes like when the Doctor goes, I'm 900 years old from from the constellation of Gusterbulus <laughs> and, um, you know, I'm a Time Lord and I'm going to smash everyone up basically. There's some weird bits like the kind of Jesus image imagery where the angels like lift him up and it's all very, it's definitely not a perfect episode, but we do we do meet Wilf in this episode and it's cheesy but it's fun cheesy and there's a decent plot you know Titanic in space there's stuff going on so you know for a special it's not too bad and that's the best praise I can give it really next we have number 11 the doctor's daughter which of course is infamous now for introducing us to Georgia Moffat uh David Tennant's wife now and you know mother to many 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 kids <laughs> um she seems like a lovely lovely actress um very interesting on twitter but hey um the episode yeah the episode is decent it's it's memorable it's very interesting for the character of the doctor and exploring his relationship with a quote-unquote daughter 
and I enjoy Jenny's relationship with Donna as well. I think that's that's quite cute, the sort of mothering side to Donna and uh, her development in a way and she's just having fun on this one until kind of the end when all hell breaks loose but yeah the plot itself of the war that you know it is only actually going on for a week and Donna works that out and it's not actually that much happens um, I like the idea of the source and it's all very kind of um, mythic and you know to do with uh, religious symbolism and all that and you know that Jenny survives in the end on to do big finish of course and stuff um, it's a shame we haven't seen her in the TV show but yeah it's a fun harmless romp but it doesn't really do anything it didn't change the status quo it didn't challenge anything it just kind of showed us oh this is maybe what the doctor was like when he was a father or you know a grandfather marrying back to susan and stuff so yeah not bad number 10 we have planet of the ood which is great for donna um very emotional scenes for her and the doctor really at the end that's what the bit that springs to mind and when she listens to the ood's song and you know she can't take it and the themes of obviously slavery and it's very deep if you think about it this episode but um again it just doesn't really stand out as one of the strongest of this season but um yeah david tennant's fine um the guy who plays captain darling blackadder is in this it's just it's a bit classic who-esque it's just kind of a a fun little run around there's a mystery or what's going on on the planet of the Ood or they're, they're acting weird um, with the red eye you know I do enjoy the Ood as a race but I do think that it's kind of limiting what you could do with them so yeah I think this is kind of you know it's it's, it's fair enough it's a it's decent tale for having an Ood story on its own that isn't relying on, on anything to do with the Beast and all the stuff in series two but yeah I enjoyed that they brought them back so yeah next we have number nine which is the Unicorn and the Wasp which I don't look on as fondly now as I do some other episodes because of the writer who Gareth Roberts isn't a very nice dude and let's leave it at that but just as the episode as it is it's, it's good fun and it uses the murder mystery formula really well and you know it's intriguing to to use the concept of Agatha Christie's disappearance and yeah just the fun time it's quite funny the Doctor and Donna are great in this episode yeah real sort of you know murder she wrote vibes stuff going on it's yeah if you just forget everything it's just it's it's a fun time and the comedy is quite good so that's why i've put it where i have so next we have the series for ending two-parters stolen earth journeys end which i do appreciate and i do like you know having the companions all together and the davros stuff i'm not a huge fan of davros you know but you know he serves his function in the story and i do like his speech where he says to the doctor you know oh what have you done to all your companions your children of time you've made them into soldiers and and, and monsters and um you know this this is all your fault basically <laughs> that uh, you know martha's got the osterhagen key and she's gonna help end the world and you know all this um yeah it's very menacing so uh reality bomb stuff but it's it's still just a bit a bit bland I guess I just I don't know the Daleks I just don't find them that engaging and interesting but I think maybe that's just not what I like about Doctor Who because I'm much more into um, historicals and learning and stuff but yeah it sounds mad I'm not really like into the monsters especially the Daleks don't know why but there you go so yeah but the character stuff is great um, the Donna stuff anyway, but not the Rose stuff, not a big fan of the whole Here you go, have another cl have a clone of the Doctor, not a big fan of that um, So that's one of the reasons I can't rate it that highly and it's just not my thing But I do enjoy seeing all the characters together, especially Captain Jack who I'm a big fan of, so yeah, good times 
Next we have number seven, Partners in Crime, which is the ultimate kind of feel good, sit back, just watch it, have fun, watch the fat walk away. Um, seeing Donna again and she's toned down and she's much more relatable and fun and the whole thing with um, her trying to find the doctor and that infamous scene where they kind of sign language through the window is great just yeah just everything about this episode is just good old fun and good old kind of cheeky Doctor Who a bit not what you'd expect from a opener with the ones coming before that and after Partners in Crime it's not the one you think of oh series openers of Doctor Who because it's very light and fun but yeah I do enjoy it next we have number six Waters of Mars I put it here because I'm not a big fan like some people but I do appreciate what it was trying to do and the concept of Time or Victorious I do find interesting I just don't like Doctor Who when it's like total angst oh, it's probably one of the reasons why I don't like him end of time to be honest but I do like uh, Lindsay Duncan's character in this and you know the dynamics of the crew and the monster is quite creepy um the robot i'm not that fussed on but yeah the way it's shot and directed i can appreciate it is a decent episode it's just the planety ones i'm not really a fan of but uh yeah i do especially like this and and the ending and it will be interesting to see what they do with this uh time Lord victoria Time Lord Victoria stuff that comes out at the end of the year but uh, yeah I appreciate it. it's a good episode it's just not a favourite of mine number five we have the Sontaran strategy on the poisonous sky which is great to see the return of Martha and how she gets on with Donna and how the three of them get on with the Doctor and there's also the bad guy Rattigan who just makes me think of Rattigan from Baz Great Mouse Detective. Um, the Centaurans here, you know, they are scary. And unfortunately they have lost their scare factor because of Strax, no matter how much I love him. But they are quite quite good in this. And you know, the whole cloning, cloning Martha thing and you know, everybody has something to do and it, it's not, you're not sitting there waiting for something to happen there's lots going on i like how unit is used in the story i like how it all ties in together with the sat navs and the baddies and and the doctor and, and what he's doing um yeah it is one of those ones i think people forget but i do think that is a very entertaining set of episodes and it's very good and nice to see um donna back at home and see a bit of wilf and sylvia as well so next we have, moving on to the top four, number four is the Fires of Pompeii, which I think some people think is overrated and some people, some people just love it and I'm one of those people who just loves it. Um, and not just because Peter Capaldi's in it, but just because it's a good historical episode as it is coming from someone who loves historicals and it has the added dilemma at the end with the emotional scene with Donna saying you know save someone please do something and then the doctor has the Jesus moment which is you know a bit much with how it's shot but that's another issue <laughs> but at the episode itself the uh the mum dad son and daughter they're all very compelling characters they all have their own things going on they all get a bit of time with the doctor uh, Karen Gillan in this episode and the soothsayers, the baddie who is the cab driver from Sherlock, you know. Um, yeah, it's all this stuff going on. It ties in really well and it tells a decent story about um, Pompeii. So yeah, I enjoy it. Uh, next we have number three, dun dun dun, Turn Left, which yeah i was never really a huge fan of but it's another one of those ones where i've come to appreciate what it's done in terms of it's an episode that doesn't really feature the doctor uh, as dr light as it were um because donna isn't my fave companion but um i do enjoy her and i do enjoy her in this and i think yeah the emotional weight behind the story is strong and 
seeing Rose again is very interesting and in how she actually reacts with to Donna um, in that Rose is very selfish. She was very selfish in series two and then she comes back here and she's even more selfish. <laughs> you know, I loved her in series one. Let's not get into this discussion, but yeah, it's very, very interesting what they do with her character here. And yeah, she doesn't even, you know, it's not like she gets to be friends with Donna or anything. She literally, she tells her what to do and then Donna does it. And she can't do anything about Donnie yelling at her and saying, you know, this isn't fair and, oh, and, you know, the alternative timeline without the Doctor is very chilling and, you know, all the, um, even concentration camps and stuff, it's very out there. It's, it's very deep stuff for Doctor Who. It's more like Big Finish kind of thing. But, um, yeah, it's a very, very interesting story. So next we have, let's move on to the top two. Number two, we have Midnight. Um, I think some people think this one is overrated, but I really enjoy it for the dynamics between the characters and how, in a sense, they create the problem by being so panicky and being so paranoid about each other and, you know, just showing the worst of humanity, really. And, um... Jeffro just kind of laughing in everyone's faces. Colin Morgan, we stand. Um, yes, so that's a very, very enjoyable episode. It'd be interesting to find out who that creature was, what that creature was. We never found out, but to see the Doctor vulnerable without Donna was um, was very intriguing, and yeah. It's, it's very scary, especially the repetition scene and then it catches up and it's like, ooh, it's very claustrophobic. And it's got really nice music as well. So yeah, that comes in at number two. Number one, we have Silence in the Library, Forest of the Dead. This one, this one, it's got much better over time. I when I, I remember watching it in 2008 and thinking, you know, oh yeah, this is a really good episode, but who the hell is this lady and who the hell does she think she is? <laughs> going to the doctor and going, I know you, you do what I say. It's like, no, she wasn't like that at all, but um, yeah, just didn't get it at the time. Just didn't get it. But uh, obviously now I've, I've come to love River Song, so it's all fine. Um, Amazing concept by Stephen Moffat, really enjoyable. I love anything that's to do with different realities and different dreams, dream worlds and um, yeah, I just find it really, really interesting, especially for Donna's character as well, that she's in this other world and then she meets her Mr. Right and the fact that he's got a stutter which is like the opposite of her, who's just so gobby all the time. It was just brilliant, but she's got a heart of gold and it really shines in this episode. And even characters like Miss, uh, Miss Evangelista, you know, you have just have to feel sorry for her. She's just so, so naive and, you know, what happens to her and everything in the library and then seeing her in in the other virtual world and miss and dr moon of course is just a brilliant character and then you remembered oh it's just so many good things about this two-parter unfortunately later on you know stephen moffat he just runs out of ideas and just starts repeating himself but this is when he was gold he was so much better when he was right writing just writing in the series and not being the showrunner in my opinion but yeah overall series four most of it is very enjoyable it's just the specials if you add on the specials then uh, it brings it down but the actual episodes in series four are all very enjoyable I find so leave what you think in the comments subscribe and like the video I'll see you later